What is up everyone, it is Sacred Sane here, welcoming you back to another video. Today we're going to be starting a new series on the channel, What If Goku and Turlith Were Twins. This series was chosen by my first channel member, Yeti Myth, and I was meant to do this series a couple of weeks ago, however I did my collaboration with Dragonstar, and then I did my 10k special, but I finally gotten around to doing this series. If you end up liking today's video, then please consider subscribing. It is free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, if you want to join my Discord server, then there is a link to that in the description of the video. You can talk to me and my community, grind for roles, hang out, and if you put your art in the Artex channel, and 10 people react with a star, it will get featured at the end of the video. If you want to see another part of this series, then get this video to 500 likes. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into today's episode of... What if Goku and Turles were twins? So we start this series on Planet Vegeta, where we see two baby Saiyans who look identical to one another. One of them being named Turles, while the other is named Kakarot. The one named Turles was born slightly earlier than his brother Kakarot, and unlike Kakarot, was born with an average Saiyan power level, if not slightly above. Turles also left his incubator before Kakarot, and even though being so young, was sent on a mission off-world, as that was a normal thing for the Saiyans. We now head to when Bardock and Gine are putting their son Kakarot into a space pod. Gine asks Bardock if he is sure Kakarot will be safe on Earth. Maybe they should send him to Turles or Raditz. Bardock tells Gine that he is sure. This is the only way to know for certain Kakarot will be safe. So Goku is sent to Earth like normal, and all the events remain the same with Raditz still suggesting to Nap and Vegeta that they head to Earth to recruit his younger brother Kakarot. He also had a younger brother called Turles, who he believes was sent on a mission off-world, however he doesn't know if Turles returned to planet Vegeta or not, so he isn't sure if he is even alive. So this leads to the Saiyan saga remaining the same, and this is where we need to try and fit the Tree of Might movie into the canon timeline. It has to happen after the Saiyan saga, since Goku is a Kaioken, however all the humans and Piccolo are revived, which makes no sense, seeing as Piccolo gets revived on Namek, while the humans get revived even after that. So we are going to need to make some changes to the movie, in order for it to make sense in the timeline. One of these changes being, that we are going to be giving everyone a third of their movie power level. So Goku would have a base power level of 10,000, while Turles would have a base power level of 6,300. A power level of over 100,000 after eating the fruit. Goku is in the hospital after he had his intense battle against the Prince of All Saiyans Vegeta, and in this timeline, Corrin did actually have a sensu bean spare for Goku to eat, meaning he will be able to go to Namek at the same time as the others, however he still wants to train along the way, meaning the gravity ship is in the process of being made, and instead of just him going to Namek on the gravity ship, the others will go to Namek on it alongside him. Though, while they wait for the ship to be made, this is when Turles and his men arrive on Earth and the events of the Tree of Might movie remain mostly the same, other than the involvement of Piccolo and the others who should be dead, and we will end up having Roshi help out in this version of events. Turles would have told Kakarot that they are brothers, and would have tried convincing Goku to join him, however Goku would obviously refuse, meaning they still fight, and this time, when Goku uses his final attack on Turles, he ends up holding back, since he already killed one of his brothers, and he doesn't want to kill another if not necessary. This would lead to Turles barely surviving, and being rushed to a special capsule corp hospital, just in case he wakes up and has an outburst. Turles would spend this time resting, for the remaining days until the gravity ship is finished being made, and the day where Goku and the others are going to head to Namek, Goku walks into the room where Turles is laying, and he then sits beside Turles. Turles asks Goku what he wants, and why did Goku not kill him? Goku tells Turles that he is here to make Turles an offer, he wants Turles to come to Namek along with himself and a couple others in order to gather Namek's Dragon Balls and revive all his friends. Turles would ask what he gets out of going, and Goku says that for one, he will be fully healed, and for two, he will get some training in and become even stronger. And Goku does want to train with Turles, saying if they train together, they can easily surpass Vegeta. Turles looks shocked, not knowing that Goku had an encounter with Prince Vegeta, and is even more surprised when he hears Goku say that he actually beat the Prince. Turles thinks for a moment, realising that if he doesn't cooperate, then his brother could easily kill him. And this does give him the opportunity to grow stronger, maybe even stronger than Prince Vegeta. Turles would reluctantly agree to Goku's proposition, so Goku would give Turles a Senzu Bean, telling him to eat it. Turles would look confused, however he would eat the bean, and he would be amazed as all of his injuries are healed. 
This would give Telus a huge Zenkai boost, getting him to a base power level of 16,000. Telus would look at his hands, being happy with his new power, however slightly disappointed, seeing that the power of the fruit has worn off. He did expect this, but it is still irritating nevertheless. This means Turles does actually have a stronger base than this Goku. This Goku after the events of Tree of Might, now having a base power level of 15,000. However, Goku does have the Kaioken, and Turles knows this, so he doesn't step out of line. At least not for now. Goku brings Turles to the gravity ship. Krillin isn't sure that Goku is making the right decision, but there is no going back now. Gohan just has a determined look on his face. He just wants to revive Mr. Piccolo, and they can use all the help they can get. This leads to Goku, Turles, Gohan, Krillin and Bulma all heading to Namek in the gravity ship. The gravity ship being both bigger and slower than the canon gravity ship, in order to support all the extra people. The ship also leaves a bit later than Gohan, Krillin and Bulma left in canon, so I'll just say they arrive on Namek slightly before they do in canon. So this gives us some time for Goku, Gohan, Turles and Krillin to all train in the gravity room. Krillin would get the least amount of gains, since Saiyans have the trait where they can more easily adapt to higher levels of gravity, which Krillin cannot do. Gohan would also get less gains than Goku and Turles, seeing as he can only use weaker levels of gravity when training. And while Gohan and Krillin are sleeping, Goku and Turles train with each other. This leads to Goku having a power level of 500,000. Gohan having a power level of 90,000. Krillin having a power level of 60,000 and Turles having a power level of 528,000. And Turles theorises that the power of the fruit may return, and he hopes this is the case, since that would boost his power immensely. The group would arrive on Namek, and they would decide to split into groups. Goku and Krillin would be one group, while Turles and Gohan would be another. The two groups would then split up, and search for the Dragon Balls. Turles and Gohan coming across the same village Gohan and Krillin did in canon, Seeing Frieza, Zarbon and Adoria, along with some fodder Frieza soldiers, attempting to get a Dragon Ball. They are about to kill a Namekian child, however this is when Gohan jumps in, firing a Masenko at Frieza and then grabbing the Namekian child, then flying away. Frieza is unfazed, but is surprised at the small child's power. And even more surprisingly, it seems that the child was a Saiyan. Frieza would then send Adoria after them. However, Gohan is far too fast for Dodoria, and Dodoria loses him, leading into him finding Vegeta instead, and their fight playing out as usual. Goku and Krillin are going to multiple Namekian villages and asking for the Dragon Balls, and after explaining their reason for wanting them, the Namekians would happily give the balls to Goku and Krillin, and eventually, they would end up at the Grand Elder Guri's place, and since the Grand Elder senses his planet is in peril, he unlocks both Krillin and Goku's potential. This leads to both Goku and Krillin getting huge boosts in power. Krillin reaching a staggering power level of 300,000, and Goku reaching a power level of 3.5 million. And this is just at the beginning of their potential unlock. As they fight, that power will grow. Goku and Krillin want to find Gohan and Turles, so they can get their potential unlocked as well. But when they try to sense Gohan and Turles' energy, they sense them next to Vegeta of all people, and they sense five other strong power levels next to them. Goku and Krillin fly over to the scene, watching as Turles takes on the entire Ginyu force by himself. But when Turles turns to face Ginyu, Ginyu punches a hole in his own chest, and he shouts, CHANGE NOW! Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then make sure to like, comment, and please do subscribe. It is quick, and easy to do. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Darko Roktansky, Frederick Frankenstein, and Yeti Myth for becoming channel members. If you want to be shouted out at the end of a video, and get other perks like the channel members here, then there is a link in the description down below to become a channel member. It greatly supports me, and it helps me immensely. With all of that out of the way, I hope to see you all in the next episode of... What if Goku and Turles were twins?